tell me the stories of Jesus I love to hear. Today we are focusing on Jesus as teacher, the one who turned our world upside down. And in Jesus' teachings, we encounter the Spirit of God, the love of God. Let us worship God together. Let us join together in our opening hymn of praise, Morning Has Broken. seated and a very warm welcome is extended to each and every one of you here today wonderful to see so many uh, at the beginning of summer uh, sometimes people uh, decide to stay away from church a little bit and sometimes it's easier just to curl up at home and take your cup of coffee and your breakfast and watch uh, via the live stream uh, that's not to say that we don't welcome you on live stream we we definitely do it's wonderful to have you as part of this service right now if you're watching live or later on uh, if you're watching later today or during the course of the week so a warm welcome to each and every one of you today you'll notice uh, a wonderful group of young people who are with us as well uh, that's the camp k staff for this year so a warm welcome to them And this year, they, under, they are under the direction of uh, Camp Director Rachel Knight uh, and also uh, Connor Watson as well. And so they're going to take part in the service a little bit later on just as a commissioning service, recognizing uh, that Camp K is an essential ministry towards young people, children and young people from this congregation. And so we'll recognize that and affirm that a little bit later uh, this morning. Also a warm welcome to Vern Tozier. Uh, I don't know whether uh, all of you will remember Vern. Vern uh, was the minister who was the intra moderator, and I know you're there somewhere. There you are. Uh, Vern was the intra moderator, I think in 2004, 2005, somewhere around there. And his wife Pauline, uh, both are with us here today. Vern and Pauline, wonderful to see you and hope that you find here uh, a, a warm welcome. I've heard your name many times. People really appreciated the work that you did among the congregation in a difficult time in their life. 
and uh, you are deeply loved, and it's wonderful to have you come back uh, with us again this morning. As we gather, we also recognize, we acknowledge that the land upon which we worship, work, and play is the land of the Haudenosaunee, the land of the Anishinaabeg, and the land of the Atawandran, sometimes called the neutral peoples. And we recognize as a Presbyterian church and a congregation within the Presbyterian church that we as a church and many settlers have done great harm over the history of 500 years since settlers first began. But it's not a story of wrong that is only a historical story. Some of those impacts of the decisions back then still affect the life and well-being of First Peoples here today. And so we confess that, we recognize that, and we pledge anew every Sunday to work towards reconciliation, a sense of decolonization. And perhaps the best definition of decolonization is to recognize that what colonization did was to dehumanize people, to treat them as less than human. Decolonization is to see people as beautiful creations of God, just like we are, siblings one to the other, to recognize full humanity in our relationships with care, compassion, equality, and justice. And so as we acknowledge this land as the land of the Haudenosaunee, the First Nations, the Atawandran, and the Anishinaabeg in this area, we pledge that promise as well. And finally, as we gather together, we recognize that we do not do so alone, that God is with us indeed, that we encounter God in worship, uh, we experience God, Jesus in the streets, we light the Christ candle as a symbol of all of that. And this is one of those days where if anything could go wrong, it might. Um, so, hmm, pretty soon I'm going to ask, I don't usually ask if there are any smokers out there, but um, today we light the Christ candle as a symbol of God's abiding presence in us, in our worship, in all that we do. Thanks be to God. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time for us to recognize the presence of God, but the presence of God is here. <laughs> Thanks be to God. in the noontime. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus when the sun goes down. Thank him, thank him, thank him in the morning, thank him in the noontime. Thank him, thank him, thank him when the sun goes down. Please join me in our opening prayer. God of the changing seasons, and especially of this summer season, we praise and thank you for this glorious time of year. Your creation calls out to us from the tiniest buttercup to the massive maple trees, from the cheery song of the sparrow to the deep rumbling of a thunderstorm. We see your splendor in a starry night and a rushing waterfall in all that you have made. You teach us about your creation as we watch the squirrels hide nuts and seeds and the birds build their nests. May we learn how to tread gently upon your earth, conserving our resources, minimizing pollution, 
being mindful of our carbon shadow, and always remembering that generations to follow need fresh air to breathe, healthy food to eat, and clean water to drink, not only here in Canada, but around the world. We confess, O oh God, that too often we focus only on our own wants and desires. We tune out the cries of the less fortunate who are begging for a fairer distribution of your world's wealth and resources. Somehow, we live like we think that we matter more than people who have no worldly wealth or power. Merciful God, forgive our selfish attitudes and unwillingness to feel compassion for those who are hungry and people who have no place to call home. Forgive us when we fail to reach out with your love and justice. Forgive us when we feel entitled to the best of everything. Forgive us because we are sorry. In your grace and kindness, make us clean and whole again as you promised through Christ. Amen. People of God's kingdom, hear the good news. In Christ, we are forgiven. God delights in welcoming us back into the loving and accepting arms of grace. Rejoice in this transforming gift. Thanks be to God. So at this point in the service, I'd invite all of the Camp K staff to come forward. And uh, you can uh, pick up one of these so you can follow along. And I'd invite you to stand facing the congregation, if you could. Connor, could you make sure that everybody's got one of those? As the uh, young people are gathering together, how many of you are campers? Nobody? N nobody ha over there one two two three campers you have missed out on so much of life I'm sorry but to be outside to camp outside around a campfire to spend some time in nature it is an experience of the beauty of God it's as though it's as though I in the outdoors God just hits us on the side of the face and says you know what I'm here I'm here. We're all connected. There's a sense of deep appreciation for, for love, for care, for compassion in all of the, uh, the creatures all around. Barb and I were last night just looking out our front lawn, and on the lawn right next door, there was a beautiful little bunny rabbit, just a tiny little bunny rabbit, just a, I don't know, maybe a couple of months old. Uh, the biggest part of the, uh, the, the rabbit's uh, body was the ears, just straight up. And Barb asked the question, what is the purpose of bunny rabbits? What's the purpose of bunny rabbits? And before I could even think about it, I said, they bring joy. I don't know whether I'm right. Maybe bunny rabbits have a whole lot more purpose, but they bring joy. Camp can bring joy into the hearts and lives of people as well. This weekend, the young people gathered here from the, from the church and wider community have been training as staff and counselors for the upcoming season of Camp K. Camp K began in the mid-1990s here at St. Andrews with a vision to welcome with open arms all children to flourish as individuals and as a team, regardless of ability, in a fun outdoor experience in God's natural environment, providing a deep love and respect of the earth. We do this by showing respect for each other, providing opportunities for friendship, fellowship, and belonging, leading to a sense of community and fostering a shared experience. Camp K recognizes the values of fun, inclusion, and life-enriching outdoor camp experiences. Children learn the values of care, compassion, teamwork, patience, acceptance, and love. They learn to respect each other through opportunities for friendship, 
fellowship and belonging, leading to a sense of community and the fostering of a shared experience. Creative play is the means by which these values are expressed and passed on. Camp K is an essential and important part of the ministry to children and youth here at St. Andrews. We hope and pray that children and young people may experience the power of unlimited love that we see and experience as the gift of God to all people, a love uncontained, boundless, and free. So we gather together today to give thanks for the gift of community, the gift of church, and the gift of Camp K. And we praise God with thankful hearts. So this is the part where I'm going to uh, welcome uh, them, uh, the, the camp staff, and also uh, ask them to affirm a few things as well. So first of all, uh, a warm welcome to each and every one of you. All of you are included in the power of love that we celebrate this day, each and every one of you. It's a, it's a love that doesn't belong to the church. The church is simply an agent that God uses to share that love. You've also experienced in your own lives, maybe without even realizing it, the beauty of nature all around, and in all of those experiences in your life, perhaps you have experienced a sense of the love of God. And it makes you interested in being involved in children and youth camp. As you leave for camp, it's our prayer that you will be part of one of the most exciting experiences of your life. You know, in church, we tell stories, stories about people like Abraham and Ruth and Jesus, people who lived in the outdoors, searching, encountering God, and sometimes they were the ones who were literally found by God. As you enter into this camp experience, you will experience, you will share in your own stories, you will develop relationships, and our prayer is that in those stories, you too will encounter a God that is love. Our prayer is that your stories will last for years to come. As a church, we send you out with our love, and we charge you with these responsibilities. First of all, let love be your guide in all that you do. Secondly, listen gently to each other and to those under your care. Show patience and understanding in all you do. Participate fully and completely in the life of the camp. Be yourselves, for who you are is a great gift to other people. Know that you are never alone. Love, however you define it, is your constant companion, as it is our constant companion. And then bring back your learnings, your feelings, and your experiences to not only share with us, but to enrich your own spiritual journey in life. I would ask you to respond with the words that are printed. Please do so. Thank you. Now to the congregation. I'd invite you to please stand as well. I now commission you as church family, as the people of St. Andrews, with these responsibilities, to pray for these young people and for the campers they work with each day, to support them in any way that you can, even if it means simply sending a word of appreciation and solidarity, to accept with joy their new learnings and excitement on their return to us and allow them, allow them to nourish your own spiritual lives. If you agree, please say, with God's help, we will. And you may be seated. And let us turn to God in a moment of prayer. Delightful God of laughter, love, and play, your will is that all your children grow in love and into fullness of life. And so today we pray for the ministry of camping that these young people embark upon. 
we offer you thanks for the grand experiences of the outdoors to teach us that the world is your great home to be shared with all of your people everywhere. We give you thanks for the first peoples of this land who are stewards of your creation. And we pray that the new experiences of camp will help us to see our responsibility to all those who are in need. We pray for encouragement so that we may remember that we are never ever alone. We pray for times of play so that we may live into being your children. Bless the work of the counselors and the directors this summer and bless the campers that they may be renewed and lifted up in your love. May we share the gifts of your goodness with one another and we pray all of this in Christ's name camp staff, my name is Marty, and I appreciate each and every one of you. All of these people appreciate each and every one of you as well. Camp K is an essential and important part of this church's life, and we go with you. You are always backed up by all of us, and you are always in the presence of a God who loves. So go and have fun. Be yourself and enjoy. And thank you.
am found Was blind, but now I see Was blind, but now I see Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, reading verses 12 to 20. Let us listen to the word of God. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, The servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but it is to fulfill the scripture, the one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now, before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Very truly, I tell you, whoever receives the one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. May the Lord bless to our understanding this reading from his holy word, and to his name be all praise and glory, now and forever. Amen. So how many of you remember uh, the good old days in Sunday school and church school when you had to memorize everything. Remember those? How many of you can still by rote say the Lord's Prayer? How many of you can say the Ten Commandments? How many of you could um, recite um, the Apostles? Wow, that's impressive. That's incredibly impressive. You see, we grew up in the reformed church we were children of the reformation and knowing these things was incredibly important how many of you could recite all of the books of the bible ho 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 some of you can still do that matthew mark luke john the acts romans first and second corinthians and on i I learned something back then i know that there are 27 um, books in the new testament 39 in the old. You know how I remembered that? 3 times 9 is 27. 39, 27. Oh yeah, 66. These things that come back. We were, we were children of the Reformation and these things were important. By the time I was 16, year old, 16 years old, I could recite all of those things that we just talked about very easily. They just came naturally. I could also, because I grew up in a very Calvinistic church, I could tell you the five principles of Calvinism, the tulip doctrine. How many of you can do that? 
total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, perseverance of the saints. I can say it today like I did when I was 16 years ago. Maybe some of you grew up in more Lutheran churches and you, 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 you learned by heart the five solas. Do you know what the five solas are? Do you remember those? I didn't learn them quite as well, but I've learned them since, and there's a lot of similarity to them, to the tulip doctrines. By grace alone, through faith alone, because of Christ alone, from scriptures alone, for the glory of God alone. Yes, we were all children of the Reformation. We were taught to know what we needed to know in order to be saved. Isn't that what it was? In order to get to heaven, you need to know these things. You need to accept these things. You need to understand these things. You need to believe these things. It was very doctrinally based, creeds and confessions. How many of know the first article of confession of the Westminster faith. The chief end of God is to, the chief end of human beings rather is to glorify God forever. I grew up on the Belgic confession, the canons of Dort, the Heidelberg catechism. We had catechism classes. We were children of the Reformation. We weren't taught so much that Jesus was a teacher. The idea that Jesus was a teacher seemed almost to be beneath Jesus because Jesus was so much more and to reduce Jesus to just a moral teacher seemed to be an affront to the true nature of Christ. And so we never were taught too much about Jesus as teacher. Oh, we heard that he taught in parables, but we were also taught that the parables had very simple meanings. The parable, for example, of the Pharisee and the tax collector. What's that parable about? You know, the Pharisee goes into the temple and he prays to God and, and he sees the tax collector, dear God, thank you that I'm not like him. And the tax collector goes into the temple and prays, God, forgive me, for I'm a sinner. And then I was taught, be like the tax collector. Don't be so arrogant. A simple moral rule. Or the parable of the 99 sheep and the one that was lost. You know, Jesus, the shepherd, um, guiding the shepherd, the sheep, back into the fold, counts them as they're coming in. Ninety-nine are there. One is gone. Jesus goes, leaves the ninety-nine behind, finds the one, brings it back into the fold. And I was taught, don't be that lost sheep. Stick with the fold. Be like the ninety-nine. Don't waste Jesus' time. Is that how you were taught to? Something similar to that? Simple teachings of Jesus, almost moral teachings, do this, don't do that. Don't be arrogant. Be humble. You know, every once in a while we come across a teacher who, who confronts our ideas. Of I remember in grade 10, we had a new teacher at the school uh, her name was Gail, and she only, the only teacher who actually told us to call her by her first name. And that's all I remember. Her name was Gail. She was different. She was very, very different. She was an English teacher. And uh, she encouraged us to think. And I remember one time she asked us to do um, an essay on whatever we wanted to. And so I was just very full with the idea that all of us counted equally, that, you know, we were all equal 
in the sight of God. That's another teaching that I learned from my church. And so I wrote an essay about opinions and my opinions and how my opinions were just as important as anybody else's opinions. And it didn't matter. It's almost like I'd be writing on Facebook today. My opinions, as uneducated as they may be, are just as important as any other opinion that might be out there. And remember the response that she gave, out of love, but very firm. What makes you think that your uneducated opinion is of the same worth as someone who has studied an issue and thought and rethought and checked and rechecked that issue for countless years? What makes you think that your ignorance can stack up against somebody else's wisdom. And I had, to, I had to think about myself. It was the first time that somebody really said, whoa, Marty, you're an idiot. It made me uncomfortable. Jesus was that kind of teacher. He made people uncomfortable. He taught in parables. Any of you know what a parable is? I was taught that parables were just stories. They were nice stories. Stories with a, as I said before, a nice moral ending. Parables actually come from uh, two uh, Greek words. The one para, meaning to walk alongside. And the other one, balin, parable, balin, meaning to throw, as in to throw you off balance. What parables do is they kind of walk alongside you as if they're your friend, and then they throw you off balance as if to take away all of those great comforting ideas that you have nestled yourself in, and they throw those comforting ideas off and leave you out in the cold. Diana Butler Bass the author of the book, Freeing Jesus, says that we need to rescue Jesus and to release Jesus from all of the creeds and the confessions that have kind of trapped him in and to see Jesus afresh as a teacher, a teacher who used parables. A parable is not a fun story. A parable disturbs you. It leaves you gasping, is what Diana Butler Bass says. Because after you've heard the parable, nothing is as you thought. Let's take, for example, this parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. She was teaching that one day to a congregation. And then she asked the simple question, who does God love in the parable? And a little girl in the front row, a little girl put up her hand and said, God loves them both because God loves all of us. And Jesus would say, absolutely. You see, if we take that parable into a little moral story, just be humble be like the tax collector, then we have completely cut ourselves off from the Pharisees in our lives and the Pharisee within us. Yes, God loves the Pharisee in us as well. And so the parable makes us think how am I like the Pharisee? And how am I like the tax collector? And what is God calling me to do? And what is God calling us to do? Those are harder questions than just a simple kind of teaching, be like the tax collector. Or, or the story of the lost sheep. Don't waste Jesus' time. Stick with the fold. Don't get way out there. Don't get lost. And yet, 
Yet when Jesus was telling this story, Jesus was the one who was out there taking people that the community at the time had cast out. All of those who were excluded by the church, tax collectors and sinners, and people who, who had any kind of disease, because, because they were not blessed by God. And who does Jesus spend his time with? Jesus spends his time with those who the church wants nothing to do with. Now that, that makes us think about this parable of the lost sheep a little bit different. Who are those who are caught out in the cold, feeling the cutting brambles and branches of exclusion and prejudice and hatred and mockery and ridicule? And what is it that Jesus says, let's go out of the fold? and bring those people back in. See, if you're part of the group of people who are excluded by the church, most recently here within the Presbyterian Church in Canada last year, we finally included the LGBTQ community into full communion. That's because of this parable. Parables... Um, arrest us. They make us feel uncomfortable. And that's exactly why Diana Butler Bass and many others say that we need to re-engage our experience and our relationship with Jesus as a teacher. Today's scripture reading read by Carol is a beautiful example. In this scripture reading, Jesus is with the disciples, and in Mark's gospel, it's the night that he is with the disciples holding the Passover. And as they are entering into the room, he stops, he grabs a bucket of water, some towels, and he begins to wash the disciples' feet. Now, now in that culture, nobody washed another person's feet. Feet were considered to be the dirtiest part of your body in every uh, expression. They stank. They were filled with dirt. Nobody wanted to touch anybody else's feet. The only people who actually washed feet were you would wash your own feet or a servant, someone who had no status, that person would wash people's feet. So Jesus comes in, the first thing that he does, he walks into the room, he grabs the pail of water, the towels, and he begins to wash the disciples' feet. And they are appalled. Peter is the one who speaks up for them. There is absolutely no way that you are going to wash my feet. It's beneath you, Jesus. You are our rabbi. You are our teacher. You are our Lord and master. There is no way that you are going to wash my feet. Remember what Jesus said? If you don't let me wash your feet, you can have no part of me. And then he, he begins this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful teaching about if you call me teacher, if you call me rabbi, I am. I am who you say. Then do what I am asking you to do. I have given you this example. I have washed your feet, and if I wash your feet, then you should wash the feet of others. You should get down and dirty and get involved in the muck of people's lives and wash their feet.
disciples were appalled. But they wanted to connect with Jesus. And Jesus, as teacher, tells them, follow my example. You see, Jesus taught about a wildly gifting God who created everything, who turned authority upside down, who shattered the pretenses of power and proclaimed a kingdom of the heart. He taught that the poor, the outcast, the forgotten, and those that mourn are all invited to a table set with an endless feast, an endless feast of love. Jesus taught, follow my example. I wonder, as does Diana Butler Bass and so many of the new reformers today, I wonder where the church would be at if we had simply followed Jesus' example, followed Jesus' teachings, as opposed to worrying so much about our own eternal salvation and trying to get our theology all right. See, the early church, the early church didn't have the, they didn't have all those creeds and confessions. They came much later, some of them much, much later. The early church had the example of Jesus and they were known for their radical and inclusive love. They lived out that love in all that they did, and it set them free. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll share the news that God is in our land, and they'll know we are Christians by our recitation of the Apostles' Creed. Oh, no. By our recitation of the 27 books of the Bible in the New Testament. No. By our tulip doctrine. No. By our five solas. No. They'll know we are Christians by our love. I'm your teacher, Jesus said. You call me rabbi, master, teacher. Do what I do. Get down and be with people in their struggle, in their hurt, in their muck, in their filth, and you will be blessed. I celebrate that I think the tide is turning. I think the church of Jesus Christ is slowly but surely shifting. And the new reformers like Diana Butler Bass and so many others are helping us to set Jesus free and begin once again to follow Jesus as teacher. Thanks be to God. Amen. stories of Jesus I love to hear things I would ask him to tell me if he were here scenes by the wayside tales of the sea stories of Jesus tell them to me first let me hear how the children i
Before we have our prayer together, there are three things I'd like to tell you about. A few months ago, you may remember Marty asking for prayer for Sir Annie and her son. Her son had a, a huge tumor. It was non-cancerous, but it involved a, a very big surgery. And finally, now Sir Annie's saying he's beginning to do a little better. He's actually coming along well. The problem was, though, that that um, tumor couldn't all be removed in the first surgery. So he's facing another surgery, either the end of this month or next month. And so Sir Annie has reached out to the congregation and asked that we, once again, keep him in our prayers as he has that surgery and as he recovers. And she's also asked for prayers for herself because she's finding this all very stressful. So the prayer group has been praying for Sir Annie and the family and she's reached out to the whole congregation to ask for prayers as well. We were saddened this week by the death of Clarence McQueen last Sunday. His service will be this Wednesday at 1 at Henry Walser Funeral Home. And the visitation will be very short, just 15 minutes before the service. Clarence was active at St. Andrews for many years. In the words of his son, he lived a life of service. I would ask you please to keep his wife Lois in your prayers as well as sons Paul and John and the daughter-in-law Diana. Also in this one just this morning, I heard about the death of Paul Kalbflesch, the brother of member Peter here. So please keep the Kalbfleshes in your prayers as well. Now I invite you to join in prayer. Teaching God how we need to keep learning from you throughout our lives. In Jesus, you taught us to be servants, and we need to keep relearning that lesson. You also taught us about forgiveness. Remind us that you call us to forgive others just as you forgive us. You taught us about being loving and generous, slow to anger, gentle, patient, joyful, kind, peaceful, self-controlled, and faithful. You taught us these wonderful qualities, and you continue to inspire us to embody them as we live out our lives. We need you to keep teaching us, even when it's difficult and we get discouraged, and, and sometimes it just seems too hard to live that way. We need to keep on struggling to understand and to accept the life that you call us to live. Help us to be aware of what it means for us to be partners with you in making our world a better place. Keep us moving along in our journeys of faith, never feeling that we have arrived. Healing God of comfort and compassion we pray today for Af Afghanistan as it deals with a damaging earthquake that claimed so many lives. This disaster just piles more pain and strife on a people already striving to cope with political strife, hunger, and so many other hardships. We lift up Ukraine as the war there drags on and the suffering and death increase. We pray for teachers and students as the school year comes to an end. May they all have safe summers and happy times. We think about students who will begin a new phase of education in September and others who will be looking for employment. God, we ask you to hear our prayers for people without air conditioning who are having a very hard time with the heat. 
We pray for people in Kitchener living in the rough who will be looking for new places to sleep and find shelter. Bless them, we pray, and inspire us to continue to advocate for more sustainable housing. And again, we pray for all the Camp K staff that they will know your presence and your love as they share your compassion this summer. When we think about life-shattering problems that so many people live with all the time, teach us to be grateful for all that we have. May we be thankful for so many blessings and generous in our sharing. Hear us now as we pray in our hearts the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples while Matt sings. this day our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Just very quickly, a few announcements to draw to your attention. First of all, a very warm thank you to all those who were involved in making this past Wednesday barbecue for our overnight guests uh, a real success. It was uh, wonderful. There were about 70 people from the community that we served, about 30 or 35 people from the congregation who participated, and also f uh, people from uh, Knox Presbyterian Church as well, people from Food for Kids who were here as well, uh, and some of the uh, staff from the Working Center uh, so it was just a beautiful evening. Uh, the uh, new warming center is now at the Edith McIntosh Daycare Center, former daycare center close to Cameron Heights. Uh, I understand things are going okay there. It's always a bit of an adjustment, but things are going okay there, so I'm very uh, thankful for that. Uh, again, thank you for those involved in that barbecue, and thank you to the whole congregation for your patience, your love, your understanding, uh, during a very difficult six months as we uh, hosted the overnight uh, warming shelter. Uh, food for kids, again, throughout the summer, we'd encourage you to offer support uh, with respect to that. Uh, Anishinaabek outreach, just so you're aware, there are uh, going to be about a group of about 25 young people who will be using Iona Hall in the summertime on Thursdays during the day uh, as part of their programming as we're uh, trying to develop relationships with uh, Anishinaabek uh, uh, outreach. Uh, gas grocery cards are available today. Again, encourage you to offer support to the WA. Two events that are coming up, community cleanup on Saturday, um, July the 9th. So uh, again, our overnight guests, it's created some uh, discomfort with some of our neighbors and there uh, is garbage that ha was strewn uh, not only on the church property, but in neighboring properties as well. On Saturday, we're going to try to encourage everybody to come out, start at the church, and head out in four directions, and just clean up garbage, just pick up garbage, as a way of trying to um, develop strong relationships with the community uh, and, to, uh, and to really care for the community, uh, the people in the downtown area, uh, and to care for the earth as well. And one final announcement, uh, just together uh, in consultation with the Camp K committee, 
um, a large water park was purchased, uh, not in the budget, but because uh, it's so hot this summer, an opportunity for the children to be cooled off during the day. Um, and it was a little bit uh, expensive. If you are able to help out with the cost of that, to make a special donation towards that, please, we'd, we'd uh, love for you to, uh, to do so. Uh, these are the announcements. Uh, let us continue to worship God in the giving of our offerings. And by that, I mean, how are we as a church, how are we as individuals going to follow the teachings of Jesus this week? How are we going to be Christians in the world? Your thoughts, your prayers, your offerings are now to be received. Let us pray. Thank you, God of goodness, for families and friends, for vacations and adventures, for a peaceful country with wonderful resources, for the gift of life and faith, for our church and its people, and for this time of worship. Accept the gifts that we offer back to you now. May they reflect our deep gratitude to you bless all that we offer, that they may show your love to the world. Amen. Silence seeking word and melody. There's 
a dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery. Unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time infinity. In our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity. In our death a resurrection, at the last a victory. Unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. Tell me the stories of Jesus. I love to hear. Jesus is indeed our teacher. Go from this place to follow his example in all that you do. And know that you are never, ever alone. For the grace of God, the love of God, the peace of God, the presence of God is with you now and forevermore. Praise be to God. Amen.
probably shouldn't say this, but Daddy. that's my. Daddy. <laughs> I did it. I did it. I did it. <laughs>